If you shot with any of Canon's most recent mirrorless cameras, so the R5, the R6, the R6 Mark II, the R3, or the R7, uh, I'm sure you've come across the Canon Log Settings menu. And this menu can be a little confusing if you don't know um, what the difference between the Canon Logs are or what the difference between the different color spaces are. So in today's video, I'm going to break down for you the different log profiles and why you might use one over the other and the different color spaces so that you can get the most out of your Canon mirrorless cameras. Let's start off with the log profiles. Canon has two different logs that they include in all of their mirrorless cameras, C-Log 1 and C-Log 3. C-Log 2 does exist, but Canon kind of saves that for use in their cinema line of cameras. So starting off with C-Log, um, so this is the first log profile Canon ever introduced way back when, when they first introduced a cinema camera. And all a log profile really is there to do is to help kind of compress the frame to, to allow more dynamic range to be recorded. And so when we talk about dynamic range, we're talking about the brightest white and the darkest black and everything in between that is the dynamic range. And certain sensors can record more dynamic range, others can record less. And so there are more aggressive um, log profiles and less aggressive log profiles based on the sensor. That is kind of Canon's reasoning for not putting C-Log2 and cameras like the R6 or R5 is because uh, the sensor doesn't create enough dynamic range to really warrant the C-Log2 profile. Back to C-Log, um, this was the original log profile created by Canon and is probably the closest to Rec. 709 um, that you're gonna get. It is still a flat profile, but it still has um, a decent amount of contrast, a decent amount of saturation, and is the easiest to grade and has the least amount of noise. But it also has the least amount of dynamic range in um, Canon's log profile range. C-Log2, even though it's not included in Canon's mirrorless line of cameras, is their most aggressive log format. So this is the flattest profile, so it has very lifted shadows, very kind of compressed down highlights. And because of the, the lifting of the shadows, it is also Canon's noisiest profile. So it brings the noise floor up and has a lot of noise, but is capable of capturing just like a ton of dynamic range. But Canon has not included this profile um, because they said it just really doesn't benefit the cameras to have it. So then you have C-Log3, which is kind of like the, the Goldie Log profile. So this is a mixture of C-Log and C-Log2. It is not as aggressive as C-Log2, but is more of a log profile than C-Log. And C-Log3 is typically the log profile that I prefer to use. Um, it has uh, just the shadows are lifted a little more and the highlights are clamped just a little more. And on the Canon R6, I've noticed about a stop more of dynamic range between C-Log1 and C-Log3. So if you want the most dynamic range out of your mirrorless camera, C-Log3 is the, the profile for you. There is a trade-off though. Um, to get more dynamic range, it is lifting those shadows, increasing the noise floor, and so C-Log3 is a little noisier than C-Log. If you're just looking to, you know, grab a shot, transfer it to your phone and post it, I would do either Rec. 709 or C-Log, preferably. C-Log you can kind of get away with not grading because it's not as an aggressive of a log profile. C-Log 3 definitely needs post-production uh, before you post it anywhere. So if you are gonna be shooting uh, with, you know, the idea that you're gonna be editing later on, C-Log 3 is my preferred profile and probably what I would shoot in like 99% of the time with my Canon R6. Now, if we take a step back and look at color space, color space and log profile um, operate independently of each other. So I think there's a misconception that by shooting in a different color space, you might get more or less dynamic range, but that is not true. Color space is just affecting 
um, how many colors and what the color values are being recorded on the camera. And then the log profile kind of determines how much dynamic range or how bright the whites and how dark the blacks are gonna be. And so if you're worried about dynamic range, C-Log3 is going to give you the most, regardless of what color space you're shooting in. Now, if we look at the color spaces, if you're shooting in C-Log, you're, uh, you have two different color spaces available, and that is BT709 and BT2020. If you're shooting in C-Log3, you get three different color spaces, BT709, BT2020, and Canon Cine Gamut. Um, and so a quick breakdown of these color spaces is BT709 is pretty much the industry standard. So if you're shooting for web use, for social, for television, uh, BT709 is the color space that basically the whole industry uses. BT2020 is an expanded range of BT709, and this is more for kind of HDR use and HDR video. And now if we look at Canon Cine Gamut, this is the widest of all the, the color spaces, and this was developed by Canon to allow you to transform uh, into any other color space. So if you would shoot in Canon Cine Gamut, you can then use a transform LUT provided by Canon to transform your footage into the BT709 space, into the BT2020 space, or into the DCI-P3 space. And DCI-P3 is mainly used for digital projectors. So if you are going to be mastering your film uh, for projection, uh, that is why you would use DCI-P3. And I think it just gives you that flexibility. So if you want to kind of future-proof your footage, shooting in the Canon Cine Gamut gives you the ability to go back and remaster your footage in HDR if you want, or remaster it for DCI-P3. Whereas if you do shoot in uh, BT709 or BT2020, you don't have the ability to transform that color space like you would with Canon Cine Gamut. If you're going to be shooting C-Log3, I would definitely recommend shooting in the Canon Cine Gamut because it just gives you the greatest amount of flexibility. And um, also if you are into using different LUTs or you have filmmakers out there that, that you wanna kinda emulate how they look, the Canon Cine Gamut is what most filmmakers use when they are creating Canon LUTs. And so your footage will be more compatible with that. Uh, just something to keep in mind. Now with all that being said, for me personally, I typically shoot with Canon C-Log3 and Canon Cine Gamma, but um, if you wanna shoot in BT709, if you wanna shoot in C-Log, hopefully this video gave you the information to make that decision on your own because there really is no best setting out there. Everybody is going to have different needs and that is why these cameras have different log profiles, different color profiles, and hopefully this video helped you to kinda understand that and hopefully it makes you a better filmmaker. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in another one.